Hi guys, welcome to episode number 34 of the video podcast, Me and My Dog and Some Yarn. Today is September 19th, 2014. It is a Thursday. Um, yeah, a rainy, miserable Thursday. Um, we finally got a break in the rain. As you can see, there's sun coming through my window, but this morning was horrible. Um, thankfully, I woke up early this morning. Um, Dottie hasn't been feeling good, so I got up early with her to make sure I had plenty of time to give her her medicine and feed her before I left, um, walk her, all of that good stuff. Um, so yeah, I left early, and I even stopped for gas, but I got to work an hour early. Yay, me! Um, I had a stack of work on my desk, and I actually finished it all. And when we had the break in the rain, I decided to get the heck out of there and get home before the um, remaining of the rain comes this afternoon. So um, I decided to podcast uh, since I have a chance, since I have about an hour or two to kill. So um, here I am. How are you guys? Have you been doing well? I hope so. Um, some of you have written me little notes on Ravelry. And I have to tell you, I love getting your notes. I love um, hearing from you guys and meeting you guys and just finding out about y'all. So keep it up. If you want to write me, um, feel free to write me. I'm, I do get busy. So if I don't write you right back, don't get your feelings hurt or think that I'm not going to write you because I always write everybody who writes me. So anyways, thank you for all those little notes. Um, yeah, so I guess, I guess we'll just jump into knitting. How about that? Um, the first uh, project I want to show you is my new project. And it's a pair of socks. Um, it is called Jack Socks and the pattern is by uh, Regina Stra Sada, I'm sorry if I messed that name up, Regina Sada, I believe is the name, and here is the picture of the Jack Socks. Uh, it's just a basic sock pattern. Um, it's worked from the cuff down. It's got ribbing at the beginning. It's got a, a heel with a gusset heel turns and um, the pattern is very basic it's sli it involves slip stitches I can tell you this because it's a free pattern um, so I'm not giving anything away but I love it I've already got one made yay um, I only worked on this sock maybe four times sitting down to knit which isn't bad. Um, I will admit uh, we took a car ride over the weekend to Hellettsville uh, for a funeral and so I did get to knit quite a bit in the car on the way to the funeral and back so that's probably why I finished it so quickly. I do need to sew in the ends and I did change the toe. I did not follow the um, pattern which said to continue in pattern. I just made it a stock in it. Um, a stockinette toe. But I'm using um, Knitsomniac Designs and it is the Sleepy Sock Base. She can be found on Etsy. It is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. It's 462 yards and the name of the color way is Jack and Sally. It is fantastic. She um, hand dyes these for you. So when you order it, um, she dyes it up special after you've ordered it. So you do have to wait about two to three weeks, but it is so worth it. Um, yeah, it's got, this is not doing, doing it justice at all. It is bright orange and neon green and pink and gray and black and purple. It's awesome. Awesome Halloween colors. So um, I love it. I have started my second sock last night. 
And here it is. And I am, it's not, it is not going to uh, focus, is it? That's all right. Uh, you guys get the gist of it. Um, so anyways, that is my Halloween socks. Um, for the last few years, I've always wanted to knit a pair of Halloween socks. And I always never do. I never seem to have time. So I'm excited about that. Um, I'm keeping it in my Halloween bag. So I pulled that out of the closet um, when I started this. This is one of my bags from Etsy, if you're interested. Um, Black Horse Fashions on Etsy. So what else am I knitting on? Um, I am knitting on a sweater. This is my Lady Charming sweater. And the pattern is by Vera, and I can't say the last name, so I'll let you guys read it. Um, it is, uh, it's an oversized sweater, which I absolutely love. I like to be comfortable. I don't like anything clingy. Um, I like to have a lot of room in my sweater just to move around and, and feel comfortable. And this one is really cute. It's got the... Um, it's got cables down the front and on the on the sleeve on both sleeves. Um, really well written pattern. So um, I will go ahead and show you guys. Um, it's hard to show because it's so big. But um, here it is. That's the front and um, the sleeves I have put this on stitch marker I mean on stitch holders and I'll go back and and pick up stitches there for the sleeve here's the back and as you can see I'm almost finished with the front and back it's knit in the round and it's hard to see because it's on circular needles and you know it's all bunched up but um, I don't have too much more. I think I have about three or four inches and then um, you split again and make the edging of the sweater. So yeah, I'm excited. It's coming along. I'm going to wear this, hopefully if it cools down, for the um, Texas yarn crawl. And some of you guys emailed me and asked me about which yarn crawl I was going on, and it is the Texas. It's called the best little the best little yarn crawl in Texas, and um, it's fun. It's out in the hill country, so it's around Austin and San Antonio within the city limits, and then little shops that are outside that area. Um, if you're not familiar with Texas, the hill country is Central Texas. It's where the hills are. Um, also, lots of rivers running through there. It's beautiful. If you're driving out in the country, you see deer. Uh, you actually have to be pretty careful at night not to hit one. I had a friend whose brother hit one, um, but he was okay. <laughs> um, but anyways, it's it's a lot of fun. Uh, we went last year, my mom and I, and we plan on going this year. And this year, we're going to spend the night, so that's going to be fun. I think. I think what we're going to do, and I've been going back and forth with how we should do this, because we've got two days, um, I think we are going to leave early in the morning and go to the other side of Austin and then work our way back through Austin and then go through go to San Antonio that night. Um, maybe stay on the Riverwalk or near the Riverwalk. We're definitely eating at Casa Rio because that's one of my favorite restaurants there in San Antonio. And then the next morning, we're going to get up early again, and um, I'm not sure of the plan yet, but we are super, super excited, and I don't think we can make all of the uh, local yarn stores in two days. We're going to try. Um, if we don't, I was thinking about saving the Navasota uh, yarn store and the... Um, the one in Page, Texas, 
for the next weekend and if I get a chance to go I will and if not it's no big deal so uh, that's the plan I'm gonna wear this um, on the yarn crawl I'll be sure to take pictures I might even podcast from the yarn crawl um, I'm thinking about it and if I have time I absolutely will so I can take you guys along with me and yeah that's something I'm looking forward to so anyways uh, so this is Lady Charming. It is made out of um, Cascade 220, and it's not the super wash. So I'm gonna have to be very careful when I wash this. Um, but it was it was almost half price on uh, LittleKnits.com, and if you haven't checked out that website, you need to because they run fantastic sales. Um, so yeah, Lady Charming. Um. I have one more project that I've been working on. It's not knit, it's actually crochet. And I don't know when I did with it. Here it is. It's the afghan for my grandma for Christmas. And you guys already saw this portion. And um yeah, I kept trying to decide how I was gonna do this because when I show you guys um, my afghan and my progress, you can't really tell um, what I've done and what I haven't. So I have done two more uh, hexagon shapes since you guys saw this. But then I've been knitting on circles. So I came up with the idea that I would knit on the circle. I would make the little circles during the week. And then when I podcast, I'll show you all the circles that I made. And next time you see me and this afghan, they'll be entered into this portion. And then I will start new circles. So that's how I'm going to do it. Um, because I feel silly showing you this afghan every time and not really showing you my progress. So I've got nine circles. And different colors. I'm using bright colors. My grandmother loves bright colors. I think she will like this. Um, again, they're not showing up as bright as they actually are. Um, the yarn I bought at Hobby Lobby and I just bought cheap and expensive acrylic yarn because that's normally what granny squares and, and crocheted afghans are made out of. It washes well, so I think it's fine. Um, so yeah, that's my other project. And that's all I've been working on. I have been super, super busy. Um, just all kinds of things going on at work. Um, yeah, just all kinds of stuff. Um, so what else am I doing? I have a finished project. Yay, a finished project. Um, let me show you real quick. Um, the pattern name is Mystic Spiral Socks, and it's by Josh Rikes. And it looks like this. Um, the pattern is a for sale pattern for $6 on Ravelry. And so go check it out if you're interested. I will have to tell you, these are super fun to knit and the pattern is very very well written it is worth the six dollars I have not sewn in my ends yet because I was too anxious to start on my jack socks and to get them ready for Halloween so I've got little ends here hanging off um, also I'm procrastinating because as I guys told you in the last episode um, this particular OMG heel um, really got to me. There were this side has a hole. Let's see if you can see it there, right where my finger is. Can you guys see the hole? And on the exact same side, even though I was extremely careful, so I have not been in the mood to try to deal with that hole, and the hole is driving me crazy. Um, I definitely need to tighten it up before I wear these. But other than that, um, it was a lot of fun to knit. 
I would definitely knit the pattern again. I might see if others have tried to knit with a different heel and perhaps do that. Um, yeah, but it was fun. And you guys, if you're into knitting socks, you should definitely try this pattern. It is a lot of fun. So, um, what else, what else? Oh, I have a drawing for a book. Um, I don't know what the book is. Um, it was a baby book, a vintage baby book, and I showed it uh, last episode in episode 33. And um, so let me go real quick. We didn't have very many people sign up for the book, and I was actually kind of shocked because I felt like everybody knits for a baby at one time or another. Um, and I don't know if it's because you guys didn't really like the vintage pattern or if you didn't have a baby to knit for. I don't know. But um, I thought it was fun to give it away. And I'm going to go ahead and give it away um, right now. Um, let me get to my... Uh, where is it? Looks like all my apps got moved around. I hate when that happens. Here it is. Okay, so we had, let me see, let me see, let me see, we had, okay, the baby book was called Your Baby Book, and it was from 1950, and it was just an extra copy that was in my library, and we had only three, enter, no, three, four, we had four entries, so I don't count because I'm the first one, so, um, so I'm going to put in two to four. Wow, your odds are really good to win this book. Okay, so two to four. And I'm going to hit random generator. And the winner is number four. So number four was... Number four was... Lori Hoff, and Lori Hoff is from uh, Wisconsin. So congratulations, Lori. Is it, I guess it's Lori. Yeah, I think it's Lori. My sister's name is Lori, but she spells hers L-O-R-I. This is spelled L-O-R-I-E, and she's from West Central Wisconsin, and she has five kiddos and a dog, and you should see the the picture that she posted. Hang on, now I've I've need to go back to it. Sorry, guys. Okay, she has knit a sweater for her daughter, um, who is now one years old, and um, she knitted the flax sweater, and she posted the cutest little picture. You guys have to go check it out. Um, but anyways, congratulations, Lori. Um, please, oh, I'm shaking. Sorry, I'm shaking the camera. Um, please message me in Ravelry and let me know your address, and I'll go ahead and get that in the mail for you. And you can knit another baby item. Um, so thanks for playing. Um, I do not have a prize for this week. Um, but uh, next week I'm going to announce the Halloween Knit Along, and there will be prizes in that, um, and that will go through October 31st. Um, so I'm still playing around with the details in my head, so I'll announce everything next podcast. So um, I did. I have been very, very good. I have not bought anything um, that I did not absolutely need. I'm trying to save all my money for the yarn crawl so I can have some fun. Um, I only bought one thing, and I didn't really need it, need it, but um, it's something that I've been wanting, and I actually found it at a half-price bookstore for half the price. So I couldn't pass it up because when you find books at the half-price bookstore, if you go back, they're gone because they get one in at a time. So this is called The Principles of Knitting. It is a huge, huge book. And if you guys have not heard of this, um, you need to check it out. It's The Principles of Knitting by June. Uh, I can't read backwards. Um, humans. He it? I don't know. Okay, so that's the name. It's 
uh, methods and techniques to hand knitting in this book is amazing. I had heard about this from other knitters, and when I went to look on Amazon, I don't know, a few years back, they were so expensive because the book was out of print. So the book has now been reprinted. It was printed, reprinted in 2012. So I must have been looking for this book in 2010 or 2011. Um, it was actually printed first in 1988. So recently came back out in 2012. It sells for about $45, but I bought it for $20 at the Half Price Bookstore. And it is amazing. It has it has different um, it tells you all the different ways to cast on all the different ways to decrease to increase um, basic you know tension um, charts how to read charts um, hems and facings it even shows you how to a little bit on how to design patterns and how to do the math on um, I guess resizing a pattern. I really haven't honestly had a chance to sit down and look at this very well but it's it's over 600 pages of just all kinds of wonderful techniques and things that I've been knitting for a long time, but there are still things that I do not know. And this book, I'm sure, will hopefully have the answer for me. Um, you know, if I can't get to my local yarn store or find somebody who can help me out, hopefully this book can do the trick. And so I'm so excited to add this to my library. And that's the only thing I've bought. I've done really well, haven't I? <laughs> I think I have. Um, so much temptation out there. So, um, the last thing I want to do um, before we close is show you um, a vintage book. And I hope you guys like this. Now that you guys didn't sign up to win the vintage um, baby book, I'm wondering if you guys really enjoy seeing a book at the end. But I guess if not, you can um, speed up to the very end or go ahead and close it and watch a different one, I guess. Um, but I hope you guys like it. Um, I just think they're so much fun to look at and see the pictures and um, some of the things that I, there are still some, some things that I would like to make that are, even though they're vintage, they could be used for today. So anyways, this book is the American Thread Company Star Puritan book number 132. It is the famous Puritan book number three. It has knitting and crochet in there. I just thought this was cute. Look how the lady is posing with her hands. That's hilarious. Um, but this is just, most of my books are just um, like all sweaters or for kids or for babies or women. Um, you know, I've got one that has all beaded, you know, beaded sweaters. But this is just like a mixture of things. Here is a drawstring it says the drawstring blouse. I guess the drawstring's at the bottom. And then check out the bag. And the bag is lined with fabric. Um, these two items, I believe, are crocheted. Yes, they are crocheted. And then here is a globe light covered with um, a crochet. And that's really cool. Actually, I had an idea to, um, as you guys know, if you watch me before, I'm trying to yarn bomb my knitting craft room, and I've crocheted an ottoman cover for um, an ottoman. I found at a resale store, and then over here, I knit a piece and covered the pole of my aunt light, and I'm in the process of making a cover for my sewing bench. Um, you can't tell, but I yarn bombed the string on my fan. And 
I have a lamp on my desk and it is like an owl lamp on the bottom and it has a shade and I found it at Hobby Lobby not too long ago and I was going to um, yarn to yarn bomb the shade and I was going to do something in lace and this might actually work I'm not sure I want it to be lacy so that the light comes through even though I don't use it for light it's more of an accent light anyways now that I'm on a rampage um, Okay, here is a blouse, a knitted blouse, and there is the uh, pattern. It's like a little eyelet pattern. Very cute. Um, let's see what else. Here are some doilies, and my grandmother used to make these beautiful little doilies. She was an awesome crocheter, and I know I you guys I've told you about her she is 96 and she crocheted up until a few years ago when she had um, some nerve damage in her hands couldn't crochet any longer but she used to make all this type of thing and what else? bed spreads I'm not sure if my grandmother ever made a bed spread but these are just beautiful can you imagine the time that it must take and the amount of yarn to actually make a bedspread that goes all the way to the floor? That is unbelievable. I started a hexi puff not too long ago and I had originally thought I would make one to cover my bed, not all the way to the floor, but kind of like a comforter type size, but I have a king size bed and the weight of that thing would be extremely heavy and it would be hard to wash so I decided not to do that and I'm still working on my hexi puffs um, anyways here is a crocheted outfit for a little doll and this is hilarious it is um, a wine bottle cover uh, around the bottle and then as you can see there's a top to go over the the cork part of the bottle a cat and a clown and a dog that is too funny that is hilarious <laughs> um, and then here, here are more doilies for the table and what else what else here is another bedspread look at the detail on that bed and spread. I cannot even imagine how long that would take. Knowing me, I'd start it and lose interest and have to start something else. And it would just sit there forever. Oh, here. This is really pretty. I like this one. Isn't that gorgeous? so very pretty and that is all for this one let me see if there's a date in here some of these books do not have the date and that really upsets me I think this is one of them sometimes they're in the back most of the time they're in the front no I do not see a date I'm guessing 19 late 50s maybe or early 60s I don't know. but anyways that is the Puritan book it's American Thread Company uh, Star Puritan book number 132 and it looks like it was was owned by a lady named Bernice um, so anyways that is all I have guys I hope you guys um, have a wonderful weekend. I hope you guys get to do something fun. Um, yeah, hope you get to do something fun. Um, and until I see you again, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week filled with lots of knitting, crochet, whatever you like to do. Um, so I'll talk to you soon. Y'all take care. Bye.